Hi, so welcome to part two of the Hart and Fuller debate. Um, last time we were talking about um, Nazi Germany regime, right? So, um, if we dismiss the idea that any immoral law as not being law, it opens up a whole new world um, of where the um, principle will serve to clock the true nature of the problems with which we are faced. Second, this will also make the woman accountable for any crimes committed in the past. Under Nazi Germany's law, this retroactive criminal statute would have punished the informer and branded her as a criminal for an act which having been perfectly legal when he committed the crime. Under this statute, individuals individuals are reminded that they have to be responsible for what they do. Fuller's core tenet is that there is a necessary connection uh, between the law and morality. In his paper, The Positivism and Fidelity to Law, he exposed the truth in regard to law and moral and tried to expose the weakness of Hart's argument in his paper. The command theory of law as a social rule, the separation of law and moral, and clear legal concept. First, the weakness of Hart's argument will show that even if laws are still law, we are validating the evil Nazi Germany's regime. The idea that evil laws from an evil regime inspire loyal subjects to follow its law within its realm is an irony. The command theory of law in the eyes of Fuller's does not um, hold well. Fuller mentioned that the respect we owe to human law must be something different from the uh, uh, respect we accord to the law of gravitation. We cannot just blindly obey law and follow laws as it is without having respect for the law. When subjects um, view law as evil, their natural intention is to disregard them as law because they have lost respect for it. If mor morality is separate from law, what is there to encourage and inspire its fellows um, subject to follow immoral laws as it is. The honorable law, on the, other on, the, on the other hand, would have inspired fidelity amongst its subject. Okay, um, well, by not following immoral laws, individuals will be punishable under the law. Therefore, the obligation for its citizens to obey the law would be viewed as a moral obligation, making this contradiction to its inherent being. The decision to d disobey them, Nazi laws, right? Uh, presented not a mere question of uh, prudence or courage, but a genuine moral dilemma in which the idea of fidelity to law had to be sacrificed in favor for a more fundamental goal. Um, there should be there should not be any link between moral and law. Fuller argues that the law has to be earned. Um, the law has to earn our trust and respect. Okay, Fuller believes that in the case of Nazi informer and her husband's justice was served. He does agree with Hart about the retrospective criminal legislation, but he disagrees with Hart in the, the view of Nazi law being legitimate. He explains that the law of Nazi Germany was so evil that how can they be law? And the, the legal positivism theory, um, I mean, it forces individuals to choose between the moral duty and the duty to obey law. Legal positivism view that no matter how evil the law is, the woman should obey it for it is the law of the land. Fuller would argue, on the contrary, she should not have obeyed, uh, be obliged to follow any immoral rules from the evil regime. There was no respect for immoral laws and thus there should not be any reason for anyone to follow such a law. On the other hand, Fuller thought that there should be a merge um, a merger of law and morality so that individuals are not forced to choose between moral duty and the duty to obey law. All right, the, um, the legalistic s system in Fuller's opinion is flawed in a hard decision of um, Gustav Radbrunch in the Nazi Germany regime. Okay? Um, Hart argues that Nazi law should be obeyed not because it is moral but because it is law. However, there were a number of secret laws 
being passed by the German legislature which are viewed as immoral. For instance, there was a um, report from the uh, Red Brunch that revealed a secret legislation to permit the wholesaling, the wholesale killing of concentration camps. Okay, Fuller accounts to the legal morality of these secret legislation. If these legislations are not known, thus the subject will have no real moral obligation to follow the law, um, which they have never heard of. In Hart's agree argument of having laws in the core settled meaning, these secret legislation would not be in the core, but in the penumbra. These secret legislations are in the penumbra. Um, they, if these uh, secret legislations are in the penumbra, they will be a series. There will be a series of laws that are unclear. Under Hart's ideal system, it is supposed to keep order, but it's not supposed to inspire um, people to be good. The question arises: How? A government can keep order when law as it's produced in a penumbra in the secret legislation. Another area where Hart fails to separate um, law and moral is, um, is the coherent structure of the legal system. Hart's main point of the argument is that the legal system is to keep rules and order in our society so that we might be um, be able to survive in the close proximity of our fellow humans. Fuller goes further and suggests that a legal system need to uh, inherit more morality. With the morality factor in the law, humans will be able to survive better because of the ever striving and improving legal system. The legal system will spit out good and moral legal judgment. In our search for good um, order, we can remind ourselves that justice itself is impossible with out order and that we must not lose order in an attempt to make it good. In regards to the case of the vehicle in the park, Fuller points to the um, need of communication of words that have a standard meaning that everyone can agree on. The vehicle in its standard meaning leaves room for the creativity, um, creative thinking. Words like vehicle can vary from context to context and this leaves us in the penumbra. Fuller suggests that we should not be just looking for a legalistic form of the law, but also look, but also the new rule in the light of its purpose and what is it aiming at in general. Okay, so the general purpose of this statute should be maintained, um, should maintain the peace and tranquility in the park. Any motorized cars, trucks, automatically fall within this category. The question of a um, tricycle in the park should not, well, should, well, in the park, but should be thought out thoroughly, okay, uh, in this context. Um, this should force the judge to take a more creative role in um, their decision making. Having the light of the laws pr uh, um, proposed, right, we ought to be, we, well, Ought we be barring the use of the tricycle in the park? Questions like these um, thrust us into the interaction of natural law and legal positivism. The heart, the theory heart had in mind, made a quick fix in the in the uh, wicked legal system, but it fails to solve the problem. It it seeks a retrospective criminal legislation, which allowed the legal system to sentence the woman in the case of the. Um, um, Brad Brunch, okay, and his theory, his theory does not offer incentive or a fidelity to the law. Um, with Fuller's theory, there is a fidelity and incentive to follow the moral laws, okay, because it will produce good society which will preserve their survival. The law in the heart's world of legalistic system without a moral will set the stage for another Nazi regime. The positive, positive slogan of the law law as law or gets alas gets is something an evil regime can take advantage of and leverage its to its uh, maximum all right so um i guess that's it for my time i'll talk to you again later on more about fuller's theory okay um until next time please stay tuned for part three of hearts and fuller debate thank you